Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Okay, so now we're getting to the point where if you have not done what we've done to this point, today isn't going to make any sense. And it's only going to get worse moving forward. Um, so please, please, please sign up and come and see me so we can fix this. Uh, if you don't know how to do equilibrium, you don't know how to do acids and bases, uh, the easy part, which is what we did, uh, strong acids and strong bases. Now we're looking at the combination of the two and trying to figure out pH. So today's not going to make any sense if the last few days haven't made any sense. So Please don't let this continue to grow. It's only going to get worse because we're going to build on each day now for a while. Uh, we have to do um, quite a bit with this. All right, so uh, which species has the greatest effect on pH? So here we need to learn something new about pH. And that is what I have over here on the right-hand side. So the key phrase to this is the stronger an acid or base is. So the stronger an acid or base, the weaker its conjugate is. And in fact, we say if you have a strong acid or base that its conjugate has no effect on pH. That's really a key. So if you have a strong acid or base, strong acid or base, its conjugate has no effect on pH. Conversely to that, the opposite. So if you have a weak acid or base, that means that the conjugate does affect pH. So that's what we're going to look at today. So what we're talking about when we're doing this then is a salt, but we got to get there. All right. So which species has the greatest effect on pH? Let me, I'm going to go through each of these. Let me get rid of them for now and start with the first one. So HCl. What happens when you put HCl in water? So if we have water, we just have H2O. Now we know H2O does not ionize for the most part. But what we do know now is, or we said it doesn't ionize, because when we write it in a net ionic equation, we don't ionize it. But we now know that there is this KW value, and that KW is really, 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 really small. I'm just gonna do it with one, just to uh, do it the way I normally don't do it, just to show you that that's okay. So we have water. Now, if we put HCl in that water, we know it's not equilibrium. It's not equilibrium. It's stoichiometry. And so we get H plus and Cl minus. Now, based on what I just said, the stronger an acid or base, we consider this a strong acid. It's one of the three strong binary acids, HCl, HBr, HI. The other one, remember, is two more O's than H's. All right, so a strong acid. What's the conjugate base of this strong acid? Well, the conjugate base is Cl minus. According to this, a strong acid its conjugate has no effect on the pH. So Cl minus here is gonna have no effect on the pH. But what exists in this solution if we put HCl? So if we have HCl aqueous, well, we have H2O, we know that. We now have H plus, we know that. And we have H plus, we have some OH minus, but there's such a small amount of that, we're not even gonna consider that we have that. We're gonna say we have the HCl and the, or the H and the Cl from the HCl instead. So out of these three things, which one affects the pH? Well, water would only if there is no other substance affecting pH. But we have what is defined as the ion that is um, defined as an acid. So every acid produces this according to the definition. And so out of these three things, which one affects pH? Well, the one that affects it the most. See, you notice I have the greatest effect on pH. The one that affects it the most is H plus or H3O plus if you did it plus water. So whenever you have H plus or H3O plus from an acid, that's what you're gonna to use to find pH. So now we would use the negative log of the H plus or H3O plus concentration and find the pH. So if I put HCl in water, the only substance I'm concerned about to find the pH is H plus. Now we just did that for two days and I didn't tell you that, but we didn't need to know that yet. Um, so now we got it. All right, next one. So what about NaOH? All right, so now we're talking strong base. So once again, a strong base, its conjugate has no effect on pH. So this one's a little bit weirder, because remember with these, we don't add it to water, we only break it apart. And it's a little bit weird here because 
you know, we don't have um, a hydrogen being accepted, right? We just have this thing ionizing. And so what we consider to be the conjugate acid of NaOH is Na+. So that ion that's formed is considered um, the conjugate acid there, a bit weird. So this is gonna have no effect on pH because it is the conjugate acid of the weak, strong base NaOH. But what is gonna affect the pH then is this, because we are so, remember, we're gonna have water, but water is only gonna have a really negligible effect. The only time we have to worry about water affecting pH uh, is if there's nothing else there that affects pH. So what does that mean? Well, if you don't have H+, so this is one of the big ones. So this is what we will find. And we'll do the negative log of the OH minus, except that gives us pOH, and then 14 minus that gives us the pH. So like I said, if you don't get the last few days, that's what we've been talking about. All right, so that's what we're talking about so far. So the key phrase, if you have a strong acid or a strong base, its conjugate has no effect on pH. All right, here comes the big one, the new one. What about, and I noticed this after I did it. Notice I did, now I did the red and the blue for a reason. Red is acidic. And when you put a uh, litmus paper or something called universal, universal, universal indicator. So it's a solution that you put into a solution to see what the pH is. It turns red um, if it's acid. Litmus paper turns red if it's an acid. Uh, and if it's a base, it turns blue. So blue for a base. I'm misspelling words. I don't know what's going on here. All right. Now that I'm, what I noticed then is I took the red and the blue and I reacted it and I formed purple. That was unfortunately not on purpose, but it worked out. Okay. So HCl. Now we are reacting HCl with NaOH and we get NaCl and H2O. Now, what we're saying over here is these are mole equivalents. Mole equivalents. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you start with the same number of moles of HCl or NaOH. Why? Because then you have no excess reactant. So there is no excess reactant. Both of these are limiting. Let's say you start with one mole of HCl and one mole of NaOH. They're both going to be used up and you're going to produce one mole of this and one mole of this. So now out of this side, now what affects the pH? Well, what do we have? We have Na plus ions, we have Cl minus ions, and we have H2O molecules in the solution. Going back to what we said over here, a strong acid or base conjugate has no effect on pH. What is Na plus? Na plus is the conjugate acid from NaOH. NaOH is a strong base. So Na plus has no effect on the pH. What is Cl minus? Cl minus is the conjugate uh, base from the strong acid HCl. No effect on pH. Well, there's no Na plus or no, I mean, no NaOH and no HCl because they were the limiting reactant. So the only thing we have that affects the pH is water in this case. We just said well, before water didn't matter. Well, water didn't matter because we had um, H plus, which affects the pH, so we didn't have to worry about water. We had OH minus, which affects the pH, so we didn't have to worry about water. But now we don't have other species that affect the pH. So how are we gonna find the pH? Well, now we know the KW. We know that the, at the KW, it's one times 10 to the minus 14, which means the Hydronium ion concentration or the hydrogen ion is one times 10 to the minus seven. So is the OH minus, which means the pH is seven. So when you react a strong acid with a strong base, you get a neutral salt. So the product of an acid base reaction is a salt plus water. Sometimes, though, the salt will not be neutral, but in this case it is. It's neutral because it's the conjugate acid from a strong base and it's the conjugate base from a strong acid. So what affects the pH in that solution is only H2O. If you didn't get that, go watch it again. All right, now we're going to put a weak acid in.
Okay, so if we put CH3 COOH in water, I'm gonna actually add it to water this time and we'll do our equilibrium. This is a weak acid. How do I know it's a weak acid? Carboxyl group. Keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying it. That carboxyl group is what makes it an organic acid. This is particularly acetic acid, stuff in vinegar. All right, so it's gonna act as an acid. So we're gonna get CH3 COO minus and H2L. Once again, we're gonna do stoichiometrically equivalent um, moles. So we're gonna start with one mole and we're gonna start with one mole. Now it is an equilibrium though. So this one's a bit trickier to figure out the pH. So can you see that we have to do something else? So we now have some other reaction um, that we need to deal with. Uh, and we're gonna deal with how to do the pH in that because we now have this affects the pH, yes. This does affect the pH. This, eh, no, because it's water. And as long as something else is affecting the pH, water doesn't count. That's a good phrase to remember. As long as something else affects pH, you ignore water. So water is pH of seven. That doesn't matter if there's something else there. And there is something else there this time because now we're talking about this phrase. This is a weak acid. Now it's a weak acid, but it is still gonna affect the pH. It is an acid still. So this does affect the pH. But now we have its conjugate base. And the weaker the acid, the stronger its conjugate. So if you have a weak acid, you have a conjugate base that does affect the pH. So we got to learn to deal with something else new here. That's what today's about. What happens if we place ammonia in water? All right, well, I need to recognize that ammonia is a base. It's a weak base. I chose two organic ones because that's what the AP likes to choose a lot of times. So we have, um, this is going to accept the hydrogen. So we get NH4 plus, and then we have OH minus. So water acted as a base in the first one. It's acting as an acid in this one. Uh, so once again, now notice what we have this time. So yes, it affects the pH. What about this one? Yes, it affects the pH. Why? This is a weak base. So this is the conjugate acid from the weak base and it's OH minus. So all of that's going to affect the pH. All right. So let's move on to today then. So I'm in page six in the packet um, and it's called the hydrolysis of a salt. I'm going to step back a little bit and then I'll refer back to what I just did again. All right. So careful analysis of titration curves. Now that's a new term. Titration curves are part of acids and bases, and we haven't introduced titration curves, but we have done titrations. So all it means is you take an acid and you react it with a base and you produce a salt and water. Now it could be a strong acid, it could be a weak acid, it could be a strong base, it could be a weak base. And that's what's gonna determine whether the salt is neutral, is it acidic or is it basic or do you need some more information to tell whether it's acidic, basic, or neutral? So those are gonna be the four options. It's either gonna be acidic. When will it be acidic? It will be acidic when you react. Let me move that up a little bit. So what are we gonna to react? To be acidic, you're gonna to have to react a strong acid with a weak base. A strong acid with a weak base produces, produces an acidic salt. Why? Well, it has to do with the substances that are in the solution that affect pH. If you have a strong acid and it's all used up, then you have its conjugate base left over. Well, the conjugate base of a strong acid doesn't affect pH. If you have a weak base though, why is it gonna be an acidic salt? It's gonna be acidic salt because of the conjugate acid from the weak base. So the conjugate acid from the weak base is what's gonna affect the pH. And so it's an acidic salt. So an example of a strong acid plus a weak base, um, let's say 
HCl, strong acid, um, and a weak base. So let's go with, how about, uh, something I know that's soluble. Let's go with zinc, so zinc hydroxide. So there's a hydroxide base. We're gonna produce zinc chloride, but it's gonna be an aqueous solution of zinc chloride. So really you're producing zinc ions, chloride ions, two of them, and then water. A lot of that reaction, what's effect, what affects the pH? Well, these are gone because we're saying stoichiometrically equivalent. So we have zinc ions, we have chloride ions, and we have water. Chloride is the conjugate base from the strong acid. This has no effect on pH. So out of those two, if, if zinc affects it, then water, it won't. Well, zinc will because it's the conjugate acid from the weak base. And so it's an acidic salt. What if we have a weak acid and a strong base? Um, instead of HCl, we have HF, weak acid. Strong base, NaOH is what we did in the last one. NaF, but not really NaF because it's an acidic or an aqueous solution. So Na plus NF minus NH2O. Which of those affect the pH? Well, weak acid, strong base. This would be the conjugate acid from the strong base. So that has no effect on pH. This is the conjugate base from the weak acid. So that is gonna affect the pH, which means water won't because that did. Water only affects the pH if nothing else does. So this is going to be a basic salt. Why? Well, because of the conjugate base from the weak acid is what's gonna be affecting the pH. When will it be neutral? If you react a strong acid, and a strong base. We just did one, I'll do a different one. Let's do uh, H2SO4, a strong acid. Lithium hydroxide, strong base. You get lithium ions, sulfate ions, and we get water. I just broke, and again, it would be I like 2SO4, so technically two of those, but strong base, conjugate acid of the strong base, no effect on pH, strong acid. Conjugate base from the strong acid, no effect on pH. So the only thing affecting pH here is water. And that's why it's neutral because we're only affecting the pH with H2O. So KW equals one times 10 to the minus 14 and all of that. When will we need more info? Well, strong base, strong acid, strong acid, weak base, weak acid, strong base. This would be if you have a weak acid reacting with a weak base. This is gonna have a Ka and this is gonna have a Kb. Let's say the Ka is greater than the Kb. That means you have a, now it's still a weak acid, but the acid has a stronger effect on the pH than the base does, which means this one is a weaker base. Refer to back over to our key phrase. Right, the key phrase was, um, let me get rid of it that. So the key phrase was the weaker an acid, the stronger its conjugate. Well, if we're saying this is the weaker base, that means if we look at the conjugates, well, even though it's a weak acid, it's going to have a stronger acid than the base, which means its conjugate is going to be weaker. And this one will be stronger. So if, when you need more info, what we're talking about is you got to figure out which one's stronger, the acid or the base, or which one's weaker. Because remember, it's the weak one conjugate. It's the weak one's conjugate that affects pH. Okay, back to page six. So this is due to the reaction of the salts that are produced with water. That reaction is called hydrolysis or salt hydrolysis. The table below summarizes the possible combinations of acids and bases and the subsequent salt hydrolysis reaction and the effect on pH at the equivalence point. So the equivalence point is where the moles of acid are equal to the moles of base. So in other words, it's a limiting reactant problem, but both the acid and the base are limiting at the same time. So there's nothing on the left-hand side of the equation left 
only on the right hand side of the equation. Okay. If you have a strong acid with a strong base, we already said, um, so the example would be NaNO3. So this would be the strong acid HNO3 plus the strong base NaOH. When you react those two together, you get Na with NO3, you get sodium nitrate, which would be Na ions, nitrate ions, and then water. So which of those affect pH? Well, Na plus is the conjugate acid from the strong base. HNO3 is the conjugate base from the strong acid. So these don't affect pH. So it's neutral. When you have a strong acid and a strong base, it's neutral. Why? You do not get any hydrolysis because neither of the um, ions, conjugates, have an effect on pH. So the solution is just water. And therefore, it's 7. Why is it 7? Well, the Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 and all of that. What happens if you have a strong base with a weak acid? So the example they're giving here is, so the strong base is NaOH again. Uh, the weak acid this time is CH3COOH. So we get sodium ions. Well, they're not going to affect the pH. But these ethanoate, um, acetate, another word for it, act as a weak base to yield hydroxide ions in solution. We're going to see that next. So why? Why? We need to answer the question why. So this next part is the equilibrium that we got to learn, um, and I will show you that. Next one would be a strong acid with a weak base. The example they're giving now, the strong acid HCl, so that's not going to have any effect on pH. And so you can see this one's going to end up acidic. But then the weak one, well, all the pHs are possible because maybe the Kb is greater than the Ka, or the Ka is greater than the Kb, or the Ka is approximately equal to the Kb. That could happen too. All right, so first we're going to predict whether these salts are going to be acidic base or neutral, but then we're actually going to calculate the pH. That's what we have to do for the AP test. All right, so the easy way to figure these out is look at their, I refer to it as their parent acid and base. So what produced the salt? So what you do is you take the negative ion and you put it with hydrogen, and then you take the positive ion and you put it with hydroxide. And then you figure out whether it was strong or weak. So in this case, it would be cobalt hydroxide, which is a weak base. It's hydrobromic acid, which is a strong acid. And so this thing is going to be acidic. Why is it acidic? Well, the strong acid, its conjugate is Br minus, and that's not going to affect pH. The weak base, though, will produce a conjugate acid that does. This one is a barium hydroxide strong base. So we have a strong base, HCl, strong acid. So that one's neutral. Strong acid, strong base, cancel. NaOH, HBr, neutral. So if you want to try some of these, go ahead. I'll pause and I'll do it. Just so I'm not sure where you are on this. It's kind of hard for me to know where you are with these, particularly when I don't hear from you. Uh, weak base, weak acid. You need more info because they're both weak. Strong base. Now you got to remember to do the weak acid. So this one's basic. Neutral. Acidic. Acidic. Um, need more info. This one is basic. Uh, this one is neutral. Silver, this one's acidic. And H3PO4, weak acid, strong base, weak acid. So this is basic. So remember, it's the weak one's conjugate. All right. How do we do the pH? The so last part. OK, so the way we do the pH is we have to, I follow these steps. Um, but we need one more equation to do that. And this is on our equation sheet. It is that the fact that the Kw is equal to the Ka plus the Kb. Because sometimes you're given the Ka, but you need the Kb. So Kw, remember, is that value. Now we're saying we are at 25 degrees Celsius. So the Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And so once we know the Ka, we can find the Kb or the other way around. Also, then you could take the negative 
um, log of both sides and get the PKW equals the PKA plus the PKB, but the PKW is 14. So another quick way to get um, your answer. All right, so recall, the stronger an acid or bake, the weaker its conjugate. In fact, the conjugate of a strong acid or base is said to have no strength at all in terms of pH. In other words, it cannot split the water molecule making H3O plus or OH minus. That's really what it's all about. This is another reason the ionization is not written as equilibrium. So strong acid, strong base, no equilibrium. Weak acids, though, they do. So weak acids and bases and their conjugates both will affect the pH. So we're gonna start by doing stoichiometry first where we don't have any acid or base left over. We only have the conjugates. So we're gonna go one direction. Now, the way we do that is we're given a salt. So we're given sodium acetate. Remember, sodium um, goes at the end when you write acetate in the organic form. So we're gonna calculate the pH. So I'm gonna follow each of these steps and then I'm gonna let you try it. We'll see how it goes. All right, so first thing, hydrolyze, hydro, hydrolyze the salt. What that means is you're gonna take it, you're gonna dissolve it in water and we're gonna make it aqueous. So we're adding it to water. So we're not really reacting it with water. So water is not a reactant, we're just dissolving it. So you're taking, um, you're taking the salt and you're hydrolyzing it by just dissolving it. In other words, dissolve. All right, well, what do you get? You get CH3COO minus, and you get Na plus. Notice it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So if we start with 0.15 moles of this, it's not equilibrium. So that means we have 0.15 molar and 0.15 molar when you put it in water. All right, second step, which one, so now we don't have this anymore because it has now produced these two. Which one of these two affects pH? Well, this is the conjugate acid from the strong base. NaOH, so that is not gonna affect the pH. This though is the conjugate base from the weak acid. So that one is going to affect the pH. So which one has a measurable strength? It's gonna be the conjugate from the weak one, in this case, weak acid. React the stronger one with water. So now we're gonna take what we are gonna affect the pH, which is CH3COO minus, and we're gonna react it with water. Now we are gonna produce an equilibrium this time. Because it is the conjugate, it's a weak, it's stronger than Na plus, but it's still not very strong. All right, so react the strong one with water. How are we gonna figure out what to do here? Well, if this is positive, then you're gonna take the negative from water. Now remember water is H plus and OH minus. So if it's positive, you give it the positive one. If it's the negative one, you give it, or if it's the uh, negative one, you give it the positive one. If it's the positive one, you give it the negative one. That's what I was trying to say, it wouldn't come out. So we use the negative one here. So we're gonna take the positive ion out of water. In other words, we're going to get that. And then we get OH minus left over. If this were the strong one, we reacted it with water, then you'd give it the OH minus. And then you'd have H3O plus. All right. So now we're gonna carry this down. Next step. What are the space major species contributing to the pH? All right, let's find the pH. We have equilibrium. We're starting out with 0.15 molar of this. Water still doesn't matter, just like it did before. Notice it's once again, one to one to one to one ratio, like it always is. But the problem now is it's not stoichiometry. We don't know how much of this is gonna ionize. We need a K value. None of this and none of this, plus X, plus X. So at equilibrium, we have X and we have X. Now, the question here is, we gotta find the pH now of this. Well, this part we could do. This is just like yesterday. This would be, now if we had the reaction, it would be just like yesterday, but now we have the substance. So we got to figure out the pH. All right, where do we go? Well, let's just do what we know so far. So do I do a Ka or do I do a Kb? Well, you'll do a Kb if you produce OH minus. And you'll do a Ka if you produce H3O plus. So we produced OH minus. So that means I need the KB. I can't do a KA when I have hydroxide. 
So the KB expression is All right, now notice what we're given up here though. We're given not the KB, but the KA of CH3COOH. So we need the KB associated with uh, the conjugate base of that. Well, there's our new equation. KW equals KA times KB. So KW equals KA times KB. The KW is one times 10 to the minus 14. The Ka in this case is 1.75 times 10 to the minus five times the Kb. So the Kb equals 1 times 10, oops, divided by and we get 5.7 times 10 to the minus 10. So now think about this, the bigger the Ka, the smaller the Kb. So this, as the Ka gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, stronger and stronger and stronger acids, the Kb gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's why strong acids are said to have no effect on the pH. All right, so now I have a Kb value. So now I can do 5.7 times 10 to the minus 10 equals x times x, x squared over 0.15 minus x. Ignore the minus x. I mean, we're definitely going to be able to do it minus 10 compared to minus 1. So the order of magnitude difference there is a lot. So we have, I'm just going to leave that in there, times 0.15 and then the square root to get x. So x equals, now notice what x equals though, the OH minus. 9.25 times 10 to the minus six. So now we know the pOH is what we want to find by doing the negative log. Negative log of my answer and we get 5.03. So that means the pH is equal to 14 minus that, which is 8.97. So when you put this particular salt, notice it ended up a basic salt. It's greater than seven. This was the conjugate base and the conjugate acid. So it was the conjugate base from the weak acid that affected the pH. And if I were to predict whether this is gonna be an acidic or a basic salt, I'd say it would be basic, strong base, weak acid. All right, so try some of these. So on the next page, I have four of these I'd like you to try. The answers are on the bottom, so you can check yourself. But I'll start the first one uh, for you. I'll give you the equations. So number one says you're taking ammonium chloride and you're putting it in water. So remember, the first step is to hydrolyze this by dissolving it, and you get the two ions. Which one of those two affects the pH? Well, this one comes from HCl. This one comes from NH3. There's our reaction, NH3 plus HCl. Well, this one is a strong acid. This is a weak base. So the strong acid, that is not going to affect the pH. It's the conjugate acid from the weak base. Now we add it to water, and we get an equilibrium. This is what I meant before by I said is it positive or is it negative? So now the positive, this is going to lose the H plus and make H3O plus. And then what we have left over is NH3. Notice again, we need a Ka now, but we're given a Kb. So then we have to do the Kw. And we need to do an ice chart. So there's the initial setup. So see if you can finish it. Um, the next one's very similar, but we have KCN, K plus and CN minus. K plus is from the strong base. Get it? All right, so try it out. Don't let this go. All right, so ask me some questions if you have them.